Well, world rugby, and for that matter, New Zealand rugby this morning have woken up and have found themselves uh, deep in a corruption scandal which has seen uh, an influential figure in French rugby and the owner of a company called Eltrad, which has a multi-million dollar contract with uh, New Zealand rugby, signed last year, a six-year contract. And if you've watched any of the All Black games this year or the Women's Rugby World Cup or the All Black Sevens, you'll see the logo of Eltrad embossed across the shirts of all of these All Black teams. But the owner of that company, a fellow by the name of Mohed Eltrad, has been sentenced in a French trial for bribery and corruption allegations. Uh, This came out yesterday as the trial concluded, and he's found guilty of active corruption. He's received an 18-month suspended prison sentence, an $82,000 fine, and a suspended ban on operating within business. Um, New Zealand rugby, I think, should point out right here and now, have, on the surface of it, done nothing wrong, haven't breached any laws either here or in France, but are caught up in this scandal. What do they do? They've got this multi-million dollar contract, which is uh, six years in its duration. It's only been running for a year. Do they walk away from this contract because of the corruption and the stench that has surrounded this company and the head of this company, or do they try and tough it out? With me now, former CEO of the New Zealand Rugby Union, David Moffat. Uh, David, good morning to you again. So if you were still in the chair of the CEO of New Zealand Rugby, what would you be inclined to do here? Tough this out because there's so much money at stake or just exit from this contract? And I presume there is an exit clause which they could invoke if uh, one party or the other is found guilty of breaking laws. So it's a case of either toughing it out or walking away from the contract, what would you do? Well, the first thing I'd be concerned about um, would be to protect the All Black brand. Um, as we know, you know, it's a it's a huge brand in sport, let alone rugby, right around the world. It's the most visible New Zealand brand um, out there uh, around the world. So, they'll, they'll, I, I would be looking at doing everything I could to protect that brand. And, the way, and the, what I would do is what they've done so far is I've put out a holding statement and then seeing just exactly, um, you know, uh, having a lot of discussions. But, um, you know, I, I, I just think that this is a, a bit of a nightmare for New Zealand because they've been caught up in something that is mm. not of their making. making exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a sad day for rugby, actually, because it's now embroiled world rugby and the whole thing and it's a a, a bit of a shambles um what i would then do having put out a holding statement would well actually because and i think i'm hopefully this is what new zealand rugby has been doing because this has now been on foot this court case for a long time i would have been actually seeking some some world class advice on how to protect a brand uh, if uh, things went south and you know and and there was convictions as there have been in this case and and the, there are those people that can advise you as to you know the steps you need to take um and then i would send the bill to ultrad for having got that advice because it won't come cheap and and hopefully they've done that um and so now they would be having some very serious conversations the the next conversation i'd be having would be with Silver Lake, because as we know, Silver Lake have bought the rights to um, the the commercial activities of New Zealand rugby, and they will have a, a hugely invested interest in in what happens next with this multi million dollar sponsorship because they get a percentage of that, um, and so you know that, so that's uh, something that will have to be taken mm-hmm. into consideration. Um, on, on the question of Silver Lake. I presume they probably headed the negotiations with El Trad on behalf of the New Zealand Rugby Union. Um, and so do, do we have to ask the question here, um, how diligent were uh, Silver Lake and finding out everything they should have known about this company before signing any contracts like this? I'm not so sure that they did um, do the deal um, with Altrad uh, because this... The deal with Altrad was done before the deal with Silver oh, okay. Lake, as I okay. understand it, was so completed. All, so, so I don't, yeah. If, so so I don't if there think is a, they, if, is a, if there's a question of uh, due diligence and whether or not 
um, New Zealand Rugby Union went deep enough into the history and the background of Altrad. Um, that's a further black mark against the New Zealand Rugby Union, isn't it? I mean, they... they well, I think you have to ask New Zealand Rugby about that. I've got no idea, obviously. All, all I can talk about is, you know, the optics of what is happening now. Um, and and I, and I feel for New Zealand Rugby in many respects because they're now caught in the middle of something which is already having a negative effect, I would have thought, because when you have a look at the headlines, you know, the headlines are, um, you know, the all-black sponsor, um, mm. you know, caught up in mm. this. So um, whether, that has a, whether, that, whether that resonates with the fans or not, I'm not 100% sure because I'm not quite sure how engaged the fans are. But it will resonate, that, David. It'll, it'll resonate with other big sponsors that the New Zealand Rugby Union might be keen to sign on um, and they'll be saying, well, hold on, the rugby, New Zealand Rugby Union is being tarred here by this Eltrad brush. Do, do we really want to get that close to New Zealand Rugby, to All Black Rugby at the moment? I mean, they'll be saying, let's hold all tickets for a while, surely, until this thing dies down and resolves itself. Yeah, I think New Zealand Rugby is going to have to um, move very quickly uh, to make a decision and, and hopefully it's a decision based on some very 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 sound advice that they're, that they're getting and there are three options really aren't there the one is to actually cancel the contract with Altrad the other is to renegotiate a contract with Altrad and then the third one is to walk away from it so you know it, it's it's not a position that I would like to have been in but it's a position that I, I would I would deal with very very quickly. The other the other conversation they'll be they should be having I'm sure they are is also with the FFR the French Rugby Union because they also have Ultrad as their sponsor. Um, and to to find out what what their position is I, I read something uh, overnight from the where where the French sports minister um, is uh, talking about uh, be because Bernard Laporte's involved in this as well who's the vice chairman of World Rugby and uh, she's called for the French Federation to hold new elections um, to, um, to, to clean up uh, the French Federation so you know it, it, I think there's a fair bit to go on this story and, and it's an unfortunate thing because as a, as a, as a CEO, you don't want to be involved in somebody else's issues, but they are because you know because they're they're the sponsor. Well, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a difficult one. I mean, there's a, a kind of a FIFA and an IOC stench already emanating from from this scandal. Don't you think the honourable thing to do here, um, even if it's going to cost New Zealand rugby uh, a loss of income, is just to walk away from this mess with Eldred? Yeah. I I I I I don't know. I'd need to see the advice. You know, I mean, if if there's any if there's any any possibility of the All Black brand being tarnished, then you have no choice but to walk away mm. from it mm. because it is so important. And it's not just important for New Zealand rugby; it's also important for the country because, as I said, you know, the All Black brand is arguably, you know as big a brand as the New Zealand brand worldwide. So, you know, this is a, this is a, um, something that they would not have wanted, but they're going to have to deal with it. And, you know, once they've taken advice, I think they'll be able to, um, to make the, the, the decision. In, in, in whichever way, you see, they're in, in a lose-lose position, aren't they, really, Telfs? If they, if they walk away from it, they lose, a, you know, Millions. sponsorship dollars. Yeah. Uh, millions of dollars and if they stay with it then you know it has some consequences as well so terrible position for New Zealand rugby to be in. Indeed um, it, it's not not exactly the same as what we saw with Australian netball a few months ago uh, where they had an issue around a potential or a 15 million dollar sponsorship from a, a steel company in Australia uh, or from the uh, daughter of the owner of the steel company and yep. uh, they had issues, moral issues, uh, around the behaviour and words of the founder of this uh, company many years ago. 
derogatory, racist remarks about the Aboriginal people, and they walked away from that deal um, and copped a lot of criticism for it as well, saying that they were too wokish and being too PC uh, and not putting yeah. the interests of netball and the players first. But a couple of weeks later, they had replaced that sponsor with an even slightly bigger sponsorship from uh, the state government of Victoria. So it wouldn't necessarily yeah, the be... Taxpayer the bailed. Yeah, yeah, the, the taxpayer, taxpayer bailed them out, and that's a disgrace. That, yeah. that, that was an absolute disgrace, Tils. And, you know, they, they, they hung Gina Reinhardt for something her father, Lang Hancock, said. And she does more for the Aboriginal communities in Western Australia than the government does. I mean, you know, but then to have Daniel Andrews, who is a fair income communist, that runs the... Um, the uh, Premier you know, of the, the state. Victorian, yeah. the Premier of... Uh, of Victoria come out and use taxpayers' money to bail out netball was an absolute disgrace, in my view. Yeah. Um, so you've got me going. Oh, well, you yeah, 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 but I mean, well, every time we talk, mate. But, but, but governments, <laughs> gov- governments are throwing money at every sport. I mean, I'm looking, you know, at the football World Cup that's going on at the moment. How much money did Qatar government put into that? How much money oh, did the New well, Zealand government? Yeah. How much money did the New Zealand government put into the Women's Rugby World Cup a few weeks ago or a few a couple of months ago? So yeah, that, that's that's another issue for another day, David. I think <laughs> I think yeah. Yeah, we'll just yeah. we'll get out while we're ahead, <laughs> and or why we're st- or why. We're still holding hands, but yeah, well, we'll just have to s- yeah. sit and wait. Well, I'm sure there's probably going to be some uh, developments of this over the next few days. We finish here for the year on Wednesday, so we may well talk again, hopefully, before um, next uh, Thursday. But in, in the meantime, David, I thank you very much indeed for your time today. Much appreciated. No problems, mate.